but God protected me, amen, because he had a plan for my life. But I want you to know that God's a good God, amen, a loving God, amen, and a forgiving God. And if we will we'll repent today, if we will repent of our sin, the Bible says 1 John 1 and 9, if we repent of our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Because God has called us to be holy. He said, Be ye therefore holy, for I am holy. Amen. So we can't run with the devil and expect to make God proud. Amen. Amen. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you, but I think it's every son's desire to make his daddy and mommy proud. Amen. Uh, you, I know you probably want to make your mom proud growing up, your daddy proud. I did. I want to be the good son and make my mom and dad proud of me. You know, but many times I let them down. You know, I, I, I'm sure that I hurt them many times by my bad decisions because I was running with the devil. I wasn't running with God, amen. But you know, the good thing is my God had a plan for me, amen. And he's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for your life. Amen. But we can't just be hearers. We can't just be hearers. We've got to be doers. Yeah. Got to be doers. See, a doer is somebody who does something. A hearer is somebody who just hears. My mom told me, Jesse, don't go up on that hill and ride that sled down that hill. I told you don't go up there. Guess what, Jesse? I went up there and rode down that hill because... I just had to try it out because it looked like a good hill. Pretty steep. Looked like fun. Guess what? Mama was right. I should have listened to her. I got 21 stitches in my leg to prove it. Mama told me not to go up there because there's a big glass up there. Big old broken bottles of glass. See, Mama knew something I didn't know. But when I was disobedient, I suffered the consequences of my actions. When we're disobedient to God, guys, we're going to suffer the consequences of our actions. Amen? Because sin don't come without a price. Yeah, we can be forgiven, but it don't come without consequences. It don't come without a price. You're going to pay the price. Amen? You can be forgiven. A young girl can go and get herself pregnant. She can be forgiven, but it don't take away that little package that she's got to take care of, and she's not responsible enough to do it. And, uh, and, and it's a great burden when you've got another life to worry about. It's one thing to worry about your life, but wait till you get another life to take care of, amen? Uh, you know, like I said, you can be forgiven of sin, but it still don't take away the consequences. Uh, let me get down. I know y'all want to go eat. Romans 6, 1 through 6. I'm going to read that. Actually, not going to read all that. Yes, I am. Romans 6, 1 through 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Not in the old ways. I mean, if you're, if you're in church today and you're still doing the same old thing, then you better check yourself, amen? Then I, I would have to question whether you're born again, amen? Because if there's not something different about you, then I would have to question if, if you know, you might want to check yourself, amen? Uh, but it says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That's a problem. A lot of times, a lot of people don't want to crucify that old man. See, Bill, I had to get rid of the porn. I had to get rid of the Bud wiser. And I had to realize that God was wiser than Bud. I had to get rid of the junk, the dope. I had to get rid of all that stuff. I had to realize that God's plan and God's ways are much better than the ways I was going, amen? amen. See, the problem is we don't want to crucify that old man. Right. You've got to kill him out, amen, because he's going to get you in trouble because the devil ain't your friend, amen? 
the devil is a liar and the father of a lie, and he he will destroy your life. Amen. But this morning you got to make up your mind that as for me at my house, I'm going to live for God. Amen. Amen. I don't care what everybody else is doing. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Man, I'm going to leave that junk alone. I'm going to go and I'm going to live for God. And I'm going to obey God because it's rather to obey God than man. Amen. The Bible says, I tell you who you should fear. It says, don't fear man after which he kills the body. Nothing else he can do to me, Jesse. I mean, you could take a gun and kill me this morning or a knife, but you can't touch my soul. Amen. Amen. My soul is going to go back to God. That's why I say... Don't never deny Christ if somebody's going to shoot you with a gun. Hey, you, you keep faithful to God. Amen. You're going home anyway. You're just going to get a speedy pass. Amen. Uh, so, hey, don't deny Jesus. He said, if you'll deny me before this wicked and sinful generation, I'll deny you. See, the problem is we quit standing up for the truth. Amen. We're afraid to speak truth to people anymore because we're afraid to hurt somebody's feelings. I want you to know Jesus didn't dance around the truth. Jesus called them snakes. Uh, he called them vipers. He said that you need to repent. Amen. And I want you to know that we need to tell people they need to repent. Amen. Of the sin. You can't live in sin and be victorious. Amen. Because sin will kill you. It will suck the spiritual life out of you. You'll have no joy. You'll have no peace. You won't even feel right when you come to the house of God when you got sin in your life uh, you'll feel like it's rolled on your forehead I've been drinking or I've been doing drugs or I've been fornicating or <coughs> you know you'll feel like that's rolled on your forehead amen but I want you to know this morning praise God Jesus has come that we might be free to destroy the, the body of sin verse 6 says knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. That the body of sin might be destroyed. You know, Jesus wouldn't have told her to go and sin no more if he didn't know she could do it. Amen. And I truly believe that God has, has given us power to say no to sin. Power to overcome. See, God changes our desires. See, it, it's not that he ever takes our free will away. See, it's all about a love relationship. See, if I love somebody, I don't want to hurt them. But see, if unfortunately, if we treated our wives the way a lot of people treat God, they'd done be divorced. See, they want to pick God up on Sunday, and then they want to live like hell through the week, or pick Him up on Wednesday. You know, they want to leave God at home when they go to work, or when they go to school. They want to leave God at home or in the shed. I know what I'm talking about. One time I left him in the shed, Bill. I had a license plate on my truck. It said something about Jesus. and I got me a little fancy truck. Boy, I thought I was looking good. And I was just like Peter. I took that license plate off. So I thought, man, if I got this nice looking truck, the ladies would check me out. I took that license plate off and I throwed it in the shed. Guess what happened every time I went to the shed? God would point that license plate out laying there that said something about Jesus. And it would prick my heart because I was, I was denying him. Amen. But you know this morning, you can be free from sin. Verse 12, I'm going to read that. Verse 12, it says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Don't give no place to the devil. The main thing is don't give him no room. Amen. Man, just drown yourself in God. Amen. Just get in God's word and, and follow after God with your whole heart. The Bible says when we follow after God with our whole heart, we'll find him. Amen. You know, it's not enough to know about Jesus, but you've got to know him personally. Amen. And it's not enough to be a hearer, but we've got to be doers. God is calling for a bunch of doers, amen, because he's need workers. The Bible says that the fields are wide and ready for harvest. you got people lost all around you. What are you doing to make a difference? What are you doing? Are you standing out? Is your light shining? Or are you walking in darkness when nobody's looking? Would you get a song?
somebody get a song, Bill, you got a song you could play or something you could play. If you're here today and you got sin in your life, it's time to get it out. It's time to cut that thing off. Amen. You got to get rid of the snake. Amen. Sometimes you got to cut his head off. Amen. The sin represents a serpent in the garden. The devil came like a serpent. You got to get rid of the snake in your life. Amen. If you've got sin in your life this morning, I want to give you an opportunity to pray. Because my God's a good God. Amen. He's a forgiving God. But guys, he don't want you to continue in the sin. And that's what he's saying to you this morning. Is let's get it right. I don't think God's even mad at you. I think God loves you. And you're not hurting God as much as you're hurting yourself. Because when we sin, it's not that God's being mean when he says, Thou shalt not commit fornication. He's just trying to protect you, amen. So he don't want you getting a cart before the horse and you got a little baby on the way and you ain't married and you ain't ready for that responsibility. It's this God don't want you to get in trouble, amen. God's trying to protect you, amen. Or it could be other things. It could be uh, other sins. But we can't keep those... <laughs> Keep those pet sins on a leash, amen. Come on, man. We gotta let let go of them, amen. Because God wants you to be healthy. Amen. God wants you to be strong. Amen. God wants you to be spiritually strong, amen. He's not so much concerned about you physical as he is your spiritual, amen. Because we're all gonna die in the physical and the natural. One day you're gonna come and you're gonna say goodbye to Brother Gillis in the coffin. You're gonna walk by and and, but I'll be gone, amen. You celebrate. Don't get down and don't even cry. I don't care if you cry, amen. But I want you to know that I've gone home to be with my Father in heaven, amen, because I've got a new body waiting on me because one day this one's going to wear out. One day I'm not going to be able to go anymore, and God's got a brand new one waiting on me, so amen. But as Bill sings, if you've got, if you've got a need this morning, if you've allowed sin to creep in, and it's easy to do, we can all do it. We can all, if we let our guard down, boy, I'm telling you, the devil, he's like Bermuda grass. He'll slip right into your flower bed. Once he gets in there, he'll take plum over. So, man, if you got sin in your life, let's get it fixed, amen? God's calling you to get it fixed. God loves you this morning, amen? And he paid a high price, and we shouldn't take it for granted, amen? Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee, zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching, followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.